Right, so back in for another busy week here. First thing we have in is this Countryman for ceramic coating. It's actually a day on and I've actually finished polishing it. Didn't, didn't film any of it. Um, I was just heads down, just getting on with it. It was so hot here yesterday, I managed to wash the Audi actually. It's the first time it's been washed in six, five weeks, something like that. Um, it was absolutely disgusting on the outside. It's been dry and sunny, well, it's been dry for quite a few weeks, so it wasn't really bad. It was just dusty and things like that, but I gave it a wash and it's raining today. So, typical. <laughs> it's just, I mean, I shouldn't be surprised, it's the way it is. Uh, but yeah, that was one thing I ticked off yesterday. The old ground's still here, that hasn't gone for paint or repair or anything. I haven't seen anybody, so I don't know what's going on with that. It's getting quite frustrating, so, because um, I really need that back. So, yeah, I don't know. I need to go and rattle some cages, I think. And then we have this mini in for ceramic coating. It's obviously brand new. It's come straight from the dealers. A few little spots around it. There's a bird line etching on the bonnet and a few little tiny, very light scratches. But overall, really good condition for a dealer car. Um, you know, for a brand new car, like you think a brand new car is brand new. Um, and that's obviously it should be. But unfortunately, they don't come like that. Dealer preparation and obviously they a lot of a lot of brand new cars tend to travel quite a long way before they actually reach their destination you know so they can pick up marks and they can be washed two three times um etc so yeah it can be wiped down you know so yeah it, it, they do get you know quite a lot of um like damage on them that's easily easily solved so and you know i know a lot of people really get up in the air about it but if the dealership prepared this properly and used coatings it won't be sat in my workshop as a job. So you have to look at it from both sides, you know? So like, you know, do we really want them to prepare them properly and use proper coatings? Maybe not because then perhaps maybe, you know, a large chunk of our business would disappear. So yeah, maybe we'd, I'm just gonna keep quiet on that one. So anyway, yeah. If you've ever seen one of these minis around in this color, it looks like a flat pastel color, but maybe you've seen them in the sun and, and realized, but it's actually a pearl metallic. Um, yeah, it's, it's a beautiful colour, especially when polished. But this is all done, all polished. I just need to wipe it down. Uh, use prepare to wipe it down. Everything, I'm coating all the plastics and everything because mini plastics are renowned for fading quite quickly um, on the wheel arches and stuff. So that's going to be um, coated with CC Evo as well. So the whole thing's going to get it, especially the piano black, obviously, as we said. So, right, I'm going to get on, I'm going to wipe this down. And I'm going to start coating, so I'll see you in a bit. Right, okay, so that's not a mini. So it's pretty obvious, you're not stupid. So the mini's gone, looking lovely and shiny. Here's what it looked like. exactly how a brand new car should look um, lovely gloss oh, what a beautiful color um, been been really sport lately working on cars in, in, in such nice colors yeah the Mustang and that one yeah really enjoyed that so the Honda behind me that's actually done as well so yeah we are a lot further along so this one was just a really quick job basically this is a, a relatively new car it's a very new car it's only got just over a thousand miles on it so what happened is the poor owner of this car um, parked on his drive as usual and unfortunately it got covered in overspray by a neighbor doing some painting. So you guys in the industry know this is quite a common thing actually. So didn't know what type of paint it was, um, but luckily it was extremely simple. Um, clay bar removed it instantly. So it wasn't anything harsh. Um, and then of course, as we know the rules, once you clay bar, you have to polish. Clay bar leaves marring, which is unsightly. It, um, it's an abrasive, so it leaves 
uh, light scratching and stuff which has to be removed so we can't just simply clay put a wax on it and send it out the door it needed um, a polish afterwards to remove the clay marks and yeah luckily for the owner this is extremely soft paint so we achieved incredible levels of correction because in its thousand miles it picked up quite a lot of swirl marks um, you know washing marks just picked up an old few scratches and stuff but literally just a single step um, and a very quick single step as well has just solved the problem i mean yeah it's not perfect but um yeah, much much better and uh, I'm ashamed I didn't get any video of it before or anything like that and you would have seen exactly what it looked like. Um, but yeah, very impressive for just a really quick single step. Um, obviously, my usual favourite for a single step, EX046. The Flex XE Force Rotation and a yellow sponge. Very, very simple. So let's just had a coat of wax on it because it literally was just sort the overspray. Um, so I just decided to, because I felt sorry, just do a really nice job, make it look nice and sort the problem for them because it's upsetting when you have a brand new car. So that's done. So what am I doing next? Um, I don't know. I don't know. I've been out fiddling around with the L brand because I said I was going in next week for paint, but I really need it back. So I've realigned the bumper and tried to pull out the wing best I can. Uh, it's not perfect, but it's drivable. I have a new splitter arriving tomorrow, so I'll clear up the rest of the paint off of the bumper, and then I'll be able to drive it. So that's that done. We've cleaned and prepared these seats for repair, which is for Rich. I've just sanded them down, uh, wiped them down with some solvent, so we just need to sort these cracks and things on it. So that's not a problem. I need to mix the colour for that. So that'll probably be my next job, I suppose. So if this gets collected in the morning, the tuxen, um, or Tuxen, yeah, Tuxen, I don't know how it's pronounced. I'll just gloss over it, just don't say it. I mean, can't get, don't know, who knows? Yeah, and then that'll be pretty much it. So, yeah, I shall catch you guys tomorrow. Right, so I'll tell you what I decided to do. I haven't got any customs cars in at the moment because there's something big happening which I can't speak about at the moment. So that's coming up, so watch out for that. So I decided to get on with loads of little jobs that I've had hanging over me that you guys have known have been hanging over me because I've been moaning about them for quite a while and every time I've tried to get on and do them as you've seen other things get in the way and they don't get done it's not a problem business comes first but now I have time to do um, a little bit playing on cars and stuff so I'm cracking on with those jobs so I have quite a bit to catch you up with so the first thing I've done is rich the seats I know this is obviously a job <clears throat> he's not really a customer um, he's a pain in the backside I have a whole cube interior here now just to repair one seat, so thanks for that. But <laughs> it's done. So you've seen earlier, you know, the cracks and stuff. They've all been sorted out. Um, didn't fill them with loads of filler because otherwise you make the it, it just look um, fake. I mean, this is not real leather anyway, but it has a grain. And if you put too much filler in, you end up smoothing out the grain. And you just end up with flat, smooth areas, grained areas. And it just it just looks... It doesn't look nice at all, makes it look obvious. So a little bit of filler, leave some of the creases in because that's just natural, but the cracks are gone um, and it's all been painted. So that's now ready to go back to him. RX-7, what have I done on the RX-7? Um, not a lot really, since this little outing on the weekend. Um, oh, I did fix the speaker because when I was out, just turning the music up, you know, I do like to have a bit of your beat when you're in the in the rotor motor and, um, it just, it, it just, I just couldn't hear it. So I did a little investigation and found that the driver's side speaker wasn't um, attached. So, or wired in, so the, the things had fell off. So we wired them, got the speaker working, fiddled about with the settings. It's now great in there. It's still 80s. It's all upgraded speakers, but it's not the best, but it's, it's better than it was. So that's that done. As we move down here, Subaru's here, I'll come to that in a second. These seats are clean. Which, maybe you can tell, maybe you can't, but they are, they are completely clean. Um, they're ready to go in the sleeker now. Unsure what's happening with them, whether they're being trimmed or whether they're just going in like that. Don't know what's going to happen there. And these are back. The old wheels for the sleeker are back. Freshly powder coated white and they have fresh 
Zestino Gredge 07 RS soft compound track tires, and they are incredibly soft. Um, so they're ready to go on the Sleeka. Trouble is, this is here, the Sleeka's at CJ's house. It's not going well. I have all the parts here that he needs to complete the Sleeka with, but he doesn't have time to get here and I don't have time to take them to him. So there's a bit of a standoff on the old Sleeka at the moment, but they're here waiting. So the biggest thing we've done is the Subaru. So I have cleaned all of the interior up, replaced the seat, so my driver's seat's in now, because uh, obviously the curb is right ready for the Sleeka. <clears throat> it's all been cleaned in here. Passenger seat is not in yet because I need eyelets for the harnesses, which CJ has. But that's at his house, so you can see what's what what the, what the what's happening here. Really, nothing's getting done because none of the parts are in the right place. So, but it's all been cleaned. Looks so much better in here. Still a bit stinky, but yeah, lovely. Cleaned all the glass, all the cages have been cleaned. So that's pretty much ready to go now. I have fitted new brake pads all around. So it now has fresh brake pads on the front as well. Has it made much difference? Yeah, yeah. I'd say it's made a little bit of a difference. It's um, definitely braking better. I need to bleed the brakes. It's still quite a long, long pedal travel. But when you finally actually get there, it does stop now. So that's an advantage. So, right, that's the small things. One of the biggest things is obviously seen on training the other day, we did polish some little bits and you can see there's still a lovely 50-50 on the wing. So I decided that I've had lots of thoughts on the car. I had lots of ideas on what I was going to do. Wrap it, paint it, put some stickers on it, just fire it out as it is, have some fun. But I decided actually let's try and just tidy it up a little bit for now because it's it's really I mean I mean this is not going to get sorted but you see the rest of the paint is dull you know look at it it is absolutely awful and after doing this little spot I thought maybe the car could look quite good so I have started polishing it so the roof's done the boot lid the spoiler's done I mean the spoiler is beyond repair it needs paint but I have really really badly wrapped the top of it in carbon I'm not a wrapper not a musician wrapper or a car wrapper, I am neither. Um, but I did an okay job. Yes, all these dimples, unfortunately, the paint underneath, I tried sanding it as much as I could. But my, my opinion or my thinking is that looks a hell of a lot better than it did before. And from two, three, four, maybe five meters away, it looks great. So just don't go within five meters, simple as that. But then I just carried on polishing. So, I mean, look at it. I mean, ignore that back water, I'll come in here a bit, but it, it's, it's genuinely amazing, the difference. This whole side's done. Um, obviously, I can't do anything about paint coming off. There's not much I can do about that, but I can make it shiny. <clears throat> so, yeah, I just decided for now, let's just make it shiny, and then at least it looks shiny. <laughs> this is all I can say, really. And to be fair, on some, some angles, he's like, look at this car here. Like, you look at that, you think, right, well, that is right, that is super clean. Like, that's end of show and shine. Um, <laughs> it's amazing what a bit of polishing can do. So, yeah, that was my thoughts on it. I did have a really good idea where I was going to do a 50-50, so this side obviously is beyond repair. So I was going to leave this side all swirled up and manky, and I was going to put graphics on it, but make them, like, patina effects, so... You know, make the graphics a bit faded or something. I didn't work out how I was going to do it, but that's what I was going to do. And I was going to put a line there in the middle. And then on this side, I was going to do basically what I've done. Polish it, you know, dress all the plastics, dress the tyres, you know, everything clean, all the glass, everything. And then put fresh graphics on here. It's exactly the same as the other side, but really bright, obviously brand new graphics that just look bang on. So you've got a bit of like a before and after on the car. I wouldn't do any paint or anything because obviously... We're not painters, I'm not a painter, painter. Sonax is not a paint company. We're a detailing company that provide professional products to the detailing industry. So it would be quite cool to have like a before and after Sonax, even on a car like this, which has been sat in a field for five years. But yeah, I just decided, uh, even though it would look cool from one side, it would always look bad. So <laughs> I decided not to do that. So. I'm just going to polish it all up so it looks nice and shiny and what a difference.
I mean, it's beautiful. I'm gonna dress all the plastics, I'm gonna make it look okay. You're not gonna go to town on it, just make it look nice and then see where it takes us. I might do some like, I don't know, 90s like kind of stripe here or something, like coming, if you get what I mean, like from here where the damage is and then a straight line down the door there. And then from this bit, like down here. So it's like a big stripe, which covers that whole quarter. I'd obviously have to do the same on the other side. Or oh, maybe I wouldn't. No, I probably wouldn't. I mean, it'd probably look a bit odd. They'd probably make it obvious that this is rusty and rubbish. But yeah, I mean, to, to be honest, as you've probably just noticed, I really don't know what I'm going to do. So what I do know is I'm going to polish it. I've been doing two stage on it actually because why not have time and I'm enjoying it. It's, it's a nice because these are one of those cars that no matter what you do, you'll always look better. So I decided I'm going to do a really quick two stage on it and I have, as you can see, some really nasty old pads that I keep in reserve just for cars like this. Cars that, well, it's not a customer's car, it's just a make it shiny car. It's, it's obviously our car so I'm not even worried about the small little details I just want to make it overall shiny so yeah I'm not going to use lovely fresh pads or clean pads or new pads they're reserved for customers cars good cars and training so but these pads here are what I keep at the back of the cupboard exactly for this kind of car so yeah <clears throat> well we still went all through the process all still got decontaminated still got um clayed and now we're just polishing. So the first step I've been using red sponge on a rotary with my favorite, well, not favorite, yeah, my favorite, I suppose, is my most used rotary compound. Cause this was really the first thing that got me into Sonax with Cut Max. And then I've been using Perfect Finish on the XE force rotation with a yellow sponge, just because it comes off easy. And I'm not even removing all the residues. I'm going straight with Speed Protect which you already know is one of my favorites. And I'm using that to remove the residues. So I'm applying a wax whilst removing the polishing residues. There is a really quick tip for you there. If the customer or a car they only want to wax, you can use Speed Protect to remove the residues and apply the wax at the same time. It's an easy way to save time. Because being a wax has no physical way to bond to a painted surface, there's no need for uh, prepare to wipe it down or anything like that because it doesn't need bare paint wax will sit on anything um, it's not very durable um, wax so it doesn't you know there's no need to wipe it down so you can save yourself a step just by going straight in with that so well that's enough of me blabbering on as usual boring you to death I'm gonna crack on with this because I want to get this done uh, and then the whole place needs a proper tidy up i need to get loads of, rid of loads of rubbish i need to clean the place right the way through and um, there's guys coming to clean the garden up yes i have a garden at the back um because it's full of rubbish from the old tenants and um the whole place is getting cleaned through and you'll see the reason why very very soon so i'm gonna get on with this and i'll see you in a second okay so an update on the subaru i still have the front bumper left to do but it's all polished well, apart from the front bumper, because I just said that. But yeah, this side is all done now. You can see the difference. It's just so funny, just a quick two-step. It's just transformed the car. Yeah, of course, it's it's not in great condition, but you know, it just what polishing can do to a car, especially this, this angle here. I mean, you know, once I dress the plastics and, you know, polish the exhaust or something, you know, that's gonna look, I mean, someone walks up on this angle, they'll be like, bloody hell, that's a clean car. Uh, it's clean, but yeah, that's about as far as you could go. I even dressed the tires to give it that fresh look. But yeah, it just you know it just goes to show the, the the worth of polishing a car. Even even when you think it's in too bad a condition to even rescue it, and and you know this does need a hell of a lot of paint. But just making it shiny, it's just changed it. <laughs> well, it's really funny. I mean, I've polished everything. I say I was using old pads, so I was just going for that. But <laughs> even the bits like here. The, you know, we've got no paint on some of it. The bits I've got paint on is really shiny. <laughs> oh dear, I was tempted just to um, blow it in with some with some clear coat just to just to improve it. But there, I just there is no point. Just give up on that. We'll run away from that corner. But yeah, so much better. So I just need to do the front bumper and address the plastics. 
I'm going to then I uh, yeah I'm waiting to do the front number because I'm going to stick the number plate on because um, this is already from a T once that number plate goes on um, I'll probably send it without a passenger seat take the take the subframe out um, and yeah you can just go for MAT then right let's get the front bumper done see you in a sec right so Subaru's done pretty much on the outside I can't really do much more there's not really much point but I have just all the plastics I have just the tires on this side I've polished the bumper I just need to put the um, plate on yeah I forgot that so it's not quite done I've cleaned the glass amazing what a difference clean glass makes to a car just really just finishes it off this is covered in scratches this glass but yeah just finishes it I mean what a difference I know I say that a lot but this really is a difference because <laughs> this was in a field and now it looks relatively um acceptable <laughs> I would say yeah. Yeah, that's about as that's about as good as I'm gonna give it. Acceptable. So just thinking what else I need to do. I I'm gonna need to take this off actually because it's old and worn and I don't want Jaegermeister on the window, so that's gonna come off and put a nice Sonex sunstrip on there. That'll freshen up the front. This bit here we'll run away from. We'll come in here because this bit makes us feel better when we look at this. Oh look at that. Look at that, it's like a new car. Just this this corner here, even on the spoiler because that's got bad paint, but this corner here, that is nice. Yeah, that's nice. <laughs> it's bad, isn't it, when you've only got one corner of a car, which is actually any good, but, but hey, we'll take it, we'll take it. So that's pretty much it. I just waiting on a few little things to bolt the seat back in. Um, yeah, and I need to put the plate on, then go for MOT, and then it's on the road, so... That's that one pretty much up together. The sleeker just needs the parts that I've got here on it. Um, that's it. Right, I'm going to end this episode here because it's a lot of me blabbing and it's already reasonably long. So thanks for watching. Hit the like button, hit subscribe and hit the notifications button so that you keep up to date with every video that we post. And also hit us in the comments and tell us how awful that thing is. <laughs> And I'll see you in the next episode.